morning, Jesus. Hey, I give you all.
Holy Spirit, you're in this place right now. Come on, you guys ready to worship? Two people, good. Come on, are the rest of you ready to worship? He's such a good God. Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to you.
about this year, 20 years, that uh, God has moved um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people actually been to our conferences or, and, and touched millions of people. Um, and I look at God, what do you want to say at the conference? And so many great things are happening. And who do you want to speak? And we've got some really cool things happening today. Um, we've got a, a next session is going to be a special session. You don't want to miss that. Um, but this session I'm very excited about. Um, I believe that God's raising up people around the world to be voices to the world. But also, we're from Australia, so we believe that God's raising up people from Australia to be voices. And um, one of the emerging young men on the planet who carries such an anointing, he's the campus pastor in our Melbourne campus and uh, of Planet Shakers, and he's also in charge of the university ministry. He's an incredible communicator, incredible man of God. He's been at Planet Shakers forever and a day. And so I want us to stand to our feet and I want us to welcome Pastor Rudy Nicaro. Come on. neighbor and just tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready. Why don't we grab our seat this morning? Come on. You know, I, uh, I really just wanted to take a moment to, uh, before we go any further, just to uh, thank, and I don't know, so many people did this last night, but uh, I wanted to take a moment to thank and honor my pastors. Pastor Russell and Pastor Sam. I got saved at a Planet Shakers conference when I was 16 years of age and grew up knowing the stories of God but never knew that the God of the stories. And, uh, and I walked into an environment just like this, never knowing that there was a God who loved me, never knowing there was a God who actually wanted to encounter me. And there was Pastor Sam on stage ushering us into the presence and there was Pastor Russell up on stage blowing on people, throwing towels on people. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. But uh, for the last 17 years, having the opportunity to encounter God at Planet Shakers and to be under your leadership and to get the opportunity to serve you and to serve the vision that you have and the encounters that you've led each and every one of us into so many times. I, uh, I know God could have used anyone but God used you to help me encounter God and to help me into relationship with Him. And I feel indebted to you forever. I know you would never say that I am because you never did this for adulation, but I, uh, I feel like I owe my life to my pastors. Can we just thank Pastor Russell and Pastor Sam this morning? You're the best. Love you. Come on, somebody. But I, I want to preach to you this morning. We have a very short few minutes. And I want to preach to you about praise. We got any praises in the room this morning? Come on, we got some South African praises down the front. Have we got any praises in the room this morning? That's good, that's good. We got about 10% of the room. Have we got any praises in the room this morning? Come on, anyone who really loves Jesus this morning? Come on, anyone who knows he's worthy of all of our praise. He's worthy of our strength. He's worthy of our energy. He's worthy of our thoughts. He's worthy of my shout. He is worthy of my clap. He is worthy of my dance. Come on, anyone who knows our God is worthy of the Queen's praise. For he is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, somebody. Give him a shout this morning. Did, did you know there's power in our praise? The Bible says, like this, it says that God inhabits. He inhabits the praise of his people. Which means every time we praise, there he is. We start our services with praise. Because I, I, I don't know about you, I wouldn't want to be in a church service without the presence of God. 
I mean, I'm just not that big a fan of karaoke. We start with praise because when we praise, God inhabits. Where there is praise, there is presence. Another, another version of the Bible says it like this. It says that God is enthroned upon the praises of His people. Which means when we praise, we're building a throne in our midst. You'll think sometimes we're just up here having fun, just up here partying. No, 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 no. We are in the midst of constructing a throne for the king. And we put one leg in place and another leg in place. The legs go on. Then all of a sudden we go to another level. We begin to create the scene. And then the back goes on. And, and then the framework. And all of a sudden we have a throne in our midst for the king to come and sit on and rule and reign in the midst of our place. See, when we praise, we create a throne for the king. When we praise, the king comes in. King Jesus. I don't know if we got any praises here this morning. I want to I wanna speak to you about the thought of broken praise. Somebody say a broken praise. A broken praise. A broken praise. We're going to read. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 12, it says this, verse 1. It says, six days before the Passover began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. And then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. And she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance, but Judas Iscariot, of course, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume, it was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor, not that he cared for the poor. Of course, he was a thief. And since he was in charge of the money, he often stole some for himself. Verse 7, Jesus replied, said, leave her alone. She did this in preparation, or she anointed me in preparation for my burial. God, I thank you this morning for your presence. I thank you this morning for 20 years where you've been faithful to your word here at Planet Shaken. That every time we gather where two or three or two or three thousand are gathered, there you are in our midst. And Jesus, we give you glory again this morning. It's all about you again this morning about your presence, about your power, about your grace, about your breakthrough. Jesus, it's all about you again this morning. Lord, would you be glorified? Would you be magnified in our midst this morning? And come on, somebody with faith, shout a big amen. Amen, amen. You know, this story, such a remarkable story, the story of Mary with her alabaster jar of perfume. She brought this alabaster jar and she broke it on Jesus' feet. She brought her praise to Jesus. And this was an expensive offering. This was an expensive act. The, the Bible tells us that it was worth a year's wages. Now, to be honest, whether you're on minimum wage or maximum wage, a year's wage is a year's wage. That's a lot of money. And she brought an expensive offering to God. She came in and she broke it open for Jesus. I love about this story that she didn't just sprinkle her praise. She didn't just bring a few drops of worship. She, she broke it open and outpoured all she had at the feet of Jesus. This, this was an extravagant praise. It cost her something great. Not only that, there's many things we could talk about in this story. There's so many things to love it. It cost her something great, but also I love this. When she enters into the pages of the story, she only has eyes for Jesus. She doesn't come in talking to Jesus about her cares. She didn't come in talking to Jesus about her own problems. And not that she didn't have any. Hello, she was a person, which meant she had problems. It's a revelation for someone. Write that down. Mary was a person. She was a person. She had problems. Come on. 
But she didn't come in and begin to talk to him about her problems. She just came in with eyes for the king. She just came in with an eye to praise Jesus. No eye on her care. It's not that they didn't exist, but there was someone more important in her midst. There was someone more important in her view. See, not only did she not come in with an eye on her problem, she also, she also didn't come in caring about what other people thought. I mean, in this story, you had someone who was judging her. For goodness sake, she was there on the floor wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. I'm so glad that wasn't me. I probably would have pierced his hair. Pierced his feet, rather. But there she was. She didn't care about what other people thought of her praise. She came in and got her dance on, whether she was a good dancer or not. She came in and got her shout on. She came in and got her praise on. No matter what the person next to her was doing, she wasn't caring about the person. She wasn't caring about the care. It's not that she didn't care about the person. She just didn't care about what they thought. She didn't let people's opinions hold back her praise because she was bringing a praise to the king no matter what she was going through, no matter what people thought of her. She wanted Jesus. This was an extravagant praise. I wonder if in our services, every Sunday, every Tuesday morning, every Wednesday night, every Friday, I wonder if in our services, if we would come in without an eye on our worries, without a care about the person next to us and what they thought, but just with eyes for the King. I wonder what our praise would break. I wonder what would happen. We brought an extravagant praise like this. But can we go deeper this morning? You see, there's so many things about this which I love. She wasn't worried about people, about cares. It was expensive. It was extravagant. But see, this, this, this praise, it wasn't just valuable in a monetary sense. It wasn't just that it cost her something great. See, history would suggest about this alabaster jar that it represented one of two things. It was either a dowry for a husband she didn't have yet, or it was an inheritance from a father she'd already lost. Which meant that while this was something of great value, it also represented a place of brokenness in her life. What should have been a, a thing of great joy, which should have been a, a thing of great value, was actually representative of a place of brokenness in her life. Either something that God hadn't provided yet, or something she felt God might have taken too soon. It was either something she'd already lost, or something she hadn't yet gained. It was something that she had not had the opportunity to have full enjoyment of. Or it was something that hadn't been given yet. Either way, this alabaster jar, while being of great value, was also a place of loss, of lack. And what I love about this is she didn't allow that to hold back her praise. You see, this could have remained a place of defeat or discouragement. It could have been a reminder of what God hadn't done in her life. This lack, this brokenness that could have caused her to close up or to shut off her praise, but not Mary. I love that she came in and she broke open this praise at Jesus' feet. She came from her place of brokenness and broke a praise on Jesus' feet. Somebody say a broken praise. Come on, shout a broken praise. Come on, like you know what I'm saying, say a broken praise. You see, for so many of us, we can get caught up in what we don't have or who we don't have or what we don't have anymore that we can forget to realize who we do have, what we've already been given, what we get to live in already. You see, in life, we all go through broken places. We all go through hurt. Hello, last night, we all have hurt that can separate us from the king or disappointment that can separate us from the king or discouragement or offense or pain. There's all things that we go through in life. We all go through broken places. And in our pain, in our brokenness, we, we can do some crazy things. We can isolate ourselves. We can addict ourselves. We can remove ourselves. See, the thing is about broken places, about these places of the greatest pain in our life, is the things that can cause you the greatest pain can be turned into a broken phrase and produce the greatest power. You see, for Mary... 
It was a broken praise, but it was a praise. It, it may have been a praise from a place of lack, but, but it was a praise. She, she brought her broken praise to Jesus, and you could say she was the first to anoint him as the king. You see, what happens when we praise is the king comes in. And when the king comes in, he comes with breakthrough. He comes with healing. He comes with provision. He comes with healing in his hand. Come on, somebody, when we praise, the king comes in. When we praise, we make way for the king. You see, for Mary, it was a broken praise. But when we invite Jesus in, he comes into our brokenness. He comes into our place of lack. He comes into those places of pain. He comes in in the midst of our praise. Come on, somebody just praise Jesus for a moment here this morning. Oh, come on, give him a praise this morning. Oh, he's good. No matter what you may be going through, he's still good. No matter the lack you may be facing, he's still the provider. No matter the diagnosis in your body, he's still the healer. No matter the chains that may be trying to bind you up, he is the freer of the captives. Come on, somebody shout a broken praise. Can we go deeper this morning? You see, praise, even a broken praise makes way for the king. Yeah. To be honest, this whole encouragement God talked to me about, it came earlier this year while I was reading. I was reading throughout the start of this year. I started in Genesis again and just started moving forward. And I want to share a story out of Genesis, but I, I, I got to prepare you. It's messed up. I don't know if you've ever read stories in the Bible that are so messed up. You're like, huh? You read these stories, you're like, what is that doing in here? That's not PG. It's one of those stories, if you know what I mean. And in Genesis 38, there's a story about a man named Judah, and it is messed up. It's so messed up, I was reading it at the start of the year. I've read it before, but most often I just skip over it because I'm like, that's messed up. I don't want to even pray about that. I'm so glad there are messed up stories in the Bible, though. Because who knows that we all go through some messed up situations. And sometimes you can read a story in the Bible that's so messed up that you're in there in the presence of God. You say, God, I'm messed up, but I'm not that messed up. Thank you, Jesus. That's messed up. And not only is this messed up, Judah is in Jesus' family line. Which means you all aren't the only ones with a messed up family. Jesus, too. It's messed up. And so here's this man. His name is Judah. It's, it's important you know before we read this story, the, the man Judah, the name Judah, it means praise. And it's about a man named Judah and a woman named Tamar. And it's also important you know that the name Tamar represents victory, prosperity, abundance. Now I'm going to read my notes here because if I don't, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Genesis 38, I'm just going to storify it for you. If, if you want the uh, plus PG version, you can read it when you get home. But the story goes that Judah goes and finds a wife for his son, his firstborn son, Ur, but it turns out Ur was wicked, and so, well, he died. Too bad. And so as was the custom, Judah looks to his secondborn and says, well, now you should marry her and produce an heir for your brother, but he was evil too, and so... He died. Just leave it at that. And so here's the situation is Judah sends Tamar back to her parents and tells her to wait until his next son is old enough. And then, well, you know, she can have him too. Not a problem. Of course, Judah delays this because he's fearful of what's about to happen to his youngest son. Judah delays, praise, praise, delays. There was a delayed, pra there was a delay in praise. And, and, and see, who knows that in Tamar's life, remember, Tamar represents victory, prosperity. But who knows that in her life right now, there ain't much victory going on. There ain't much abundance going on. There's not much prosperity happening. In fact, you could say in her life, that was a messed up situation. She was in a place of brokenness. She was in a place of lack. But as the story goes, one day Judah... Turns out he'd recently lost his wife, and so he went off on a business trip, and he thought to himself, I'm on a work trip. Who's going to know? 
thought, I haven't been intimate with anyone for a while. He thought, not a problem. Maybe if I bump into someone, I can know them. <laughs> know them. And so off Judah went on his work trip with a heart full of dreams, just ready to go. Turns out one day he did bump into someone and he knew them. Of course, what happened is this story, in the story, this person happened to be Tamar. And she was, I told you this was messed up. This is his daughter-in-law. Don't even go there. Anyway, this messed up. But he bumps into Tamar. He didn't realize it was Tamar. She was wearing all these clothes and all this stuff. She didn't know who it was. He was just there for what he was there for. And so there he was. And he knew Tamar. And praise, think about this, praise came down to a place where there, there should have been victory where there should have been prosperity, where, 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 where there should have been abundance, but, but there wasn't. Praise came to a place of brokenness. Praise came to a place of lack. Praise came to a place of loss. Somebody, somebody say a broken praise. You see, if I've ever seen a messed up situation, hello. If I've ever seen a place of, bro I mean, hello, that's brokenness right there. But I, I, I want to show you what happens. The result, Genesis 38, 27 says this. It says, when the time came for Tamar to give birth, you see Judah, as life goes on, he found out that Tamar was pregnant and in, with a righteous indignation, he says, she should die. And they're taking her out to kill her, pregnant as she was. And on the way out to die, she just sends a message to Judah. It's like, yo, what's up? You left these at my house. And of course, being the upright man that he was, he's like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Not a problem. You can live. And it says this, Genesis 38, 27, it says, when the time came for Tamar to give birth, it was discovered that she was carrying twins. Come on, somebody. She was carrying twins. Can somebody say double portion? She was carrying twins. I'm going to need the band to come back. You see, when she gave birth, out came two boys. One was named Perez. One was named Zerah. When praise came to this place of lack, when praise came in the midst of a messed up situation, when praise stepped into brokenness, there was a double portion that came out. There was a double portion that came out. And when she gave birth to her first baby boy, she named him Perez. I don't know if you're ready for this. And the name Perez means breakthrough. Oh, come on, somebody. When praise comes to a broken situation, there's a breakthrough on the way. When praise comes in the midst of your messed up life, there's a breakthrough coming to visit you. When we can muster up a praise in the midst of our brokenness, the king comes in. He comes in with breakthroughs. That, that, that's just number one, though. That's just number one. Number two, second born, the twin, Zerah. When you translate that into our language, it means light arising. See, sometimes you can be in the midst of your darkness. Sometimes you can be in the midst of your brokenness. Sometimes you can be in the midst of people walking out on you. Sometimes you can be in the midst of lack and loss. Oh, planet shakers, but if you can muster up a praise, it, it may be a broken praise. It may cost you something. It may take something, but if you can muster up a praise, you may wait for the king. And when the king comes in, he has breakthrough. He brings light into the darkest situations of your life. Oh, he comes with healing in his hands. Oh, when the king comes in. Oh, woo! Come on, just take five seconds. Just praise him. Come on, just praise him. Watching this today, there's power in our praise. When you can praise in the presence of your problems, 
when you can praise against the backdrop of brokenness, you may wait for breakthrough and a light breaking into your situation. Somebody say a broken praise, a broken praise. See, when we're feeling broken, we don't feel like praising. When we're feeling lost and lack, we don't want to party. But praise is so much more than just fun. Oh, it is fun. It can be fun, but if you're not going through a fun thing in life, you, you may not feel like praising. I'm so glad that praise isn't dictated by my feelings. His presence isn't held back by my problems. You see, I, I, I've been some places before and they have this idea that praise is just for the young people. Praise isn't just for young people. The Bible doesn't say clap your hands, all ye young people. It just says clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For He is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, I will dance before the Lord with all my might. Hey, it may be broken. It may come from loss. It may come from lack. But I got a king. Hey, he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. You see, we, 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 we need our young people to praise God. Can I be honest? They, they jump higher than I can. I used to jump higher. My knees disagree with it these days. They can dance a lot better than I can. Not a problem. Cool, cool. But I don't want to let the increase of my age decrease my praise. I got so much more to praise God for today than I did yesterday. I got so much more to praise God for this year than I did 17 years ago when I gave my life to God. I, I got so much more to praise God for this morning than I did last night. You see, I, I, I don't want to settle down. I want to fly around. But the older I get, the more I've got to thank my Jesus for. Hey! But, but in life, it just goes that the older we get, the, the, the more brokenness we go through. And we could be like Mary that day, standing in the door of that house, clutching the symbol of her brokenness, clutching the symbol of her lack, holding on to what represented her loss and her brokenness. We could come in like that and just hold on to our brokenness. Or we could come before the King. No matter what age or stage we find ourselves at, no matter where on the mountaintop or in the valley, no matter where we find ourselves, we can come in and broke our praise, even if it's from a place of brokenness, and bring a broken praise to our King. No matter what I feel like, I want to praise Him. No matter what life looks like, I want to praise Him. No matter who's with me or not with me, I want to be a praiser. No matter what's going on inside, I want to lift up a praise to my King. Philosophy. It may not work with great logic, but I'm telling you, it's a powerful theology. It exalts God. It's a strong ecclesiology. It makes room for Him in that house. It's a good eschatology. It gets us ready for heaven. Oh, it's a powerful pneumatology. It makes room for the Spirit. And it's an exalted Christology. Lifting up the King. Come on, somebody lift up a praise this morning. Come on, Brad Shakers. Praise him like you mean it. Praise him no matter what you're going through. Praise him no matter how you're feeling. Praise him no matter what it sounds like. want to stir you in your praise. This conference, we, 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 we put it on the flyers and on the website. We said, uh, after 20 years, it's still about His presence. And, and if there's one thing 
There's one thing I learned from my pastor. It's got to be about the presence. If you can muster up a praise, no matter what you're going through. If you can praise when the band's not playing loud. If you can praise where the jot's in your bedroom waking you up in the morning with a good little praise. That'd be weird, wouldn't it, Joth? That'd be quite strange. If you can praise no matter what you're going through, no matter who's along, so you make way for the King. And if there's one person we want to exalt, if there's one name we want to lift up, if there's one thing we want to make room for, yes, even in the midst of my brokenness, Yes, even in the midst of my life. Yes, even in the midst of what I'm going. If there's one person I want to make way for, if there's one thing I want to make way for, it's Jesus. It's King Jesus. Oh, Brother Shakers, he's here this morning. He's here with breakthrough. He's here to shine a light into the darkness of your situation. He's here with healing in his hands. He's here to wash away the wounds of your brokenness. He's here to pull out the arrows of the enemy. He's here. To shut down the world. He is here to set captives free. He is here. Come on, shout a praise this morning. Shout a praise. Come on, when we praise, the King comes in. When we praise, His presence comes in. When we praise, I just feel that we need to release a shout in this place. All over this room, just for a moment, every every eye closed. Maybe you're here and the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. Maybe you're here this morning and the person next to you is standing. That's really the only reason you're standing. You're not standing because you feel like it. You're broken. You walked in here messed up. You're carrying with you your loss, your lack, your hurt, your offense. Those memories of pain that can seem to haunt us. There are people in here and you've been bound up in addiction. There are leaders in here and you know, and you know God knows, even if no one else knows, you know that there is sin in your life. Pastor Russell said it last night, I say that not to say shame on you, I say that to say, oh come on, would you make way for the king this morning because he wants to lift shame off you. And all over this room this morning, I know God is speaking to people. And if that's you, every eye closed, would you raise your hand? Because I know there are people here and that, that is you. You're in the midst of your brokenness. You're in the midst of your pain. You're wrapped up in things. You're caught up in things. This morning, there's a breakthrough on the way. There's a light that's about to shine in the midst of your darkness. And I believe this morning we're going to release a shout in this place. And whether your hands are raised or not, even, hey, even if your hands are not raised, there's power in our praise. Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's to break the person next to you free. Hello, Paul and Silas in prison. It doesn't matter what you're going through, mountaintop or valley, that we've got to be praises. We need to praise the King. When we praise, the King comes in. We need to make way for Him. Every morning, every evening, all early, will I seek Thee. I will enter your courts with thanksgiving. I will come into your house with praise. I want to make way for the King. On a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a way every day, I want to make way for the King. Because when I praise, the King comes in. Come on, planet shakers, from the back to the front, from the left to the right. Would you lift the prayer? Give me 30 seconds, more praise. 
room, every hand raised, every eye closed. Jesus. See what's happened before you even came in here this morning. We began to construct the throne. We started praising when you all came in. We kept building that throne. All throughout the word we've been building building a throne and he's here he's here to heal people this morning he's here to touch people this morning there are people in here with a conflicted heart but half of your heart is full of dreams and the other half of your heart is telling you how you'll never be able to do it he's here this morning to wipe away your fears and your doubts. He's here this morning to inspire you with faith. There's someone in here right now and you, you got a sprained elbow and the healer wants to heal you in this place. There's another person in this room this morning and you got an injury, of, I believe, to your quadricep right now. God wants to come and heal you. There's someone here watching online through Daystar. I, I, I believe that you got glaucoma. And right now, Jesus, wants to, the King, wants to step into your life and into your room and to heal you in this place. Oh, come on, somebody. There's someone in here with a broken heart. There's someone in here carrying wounds from the past. The King wants to just come and wash away and wipe away the pain that you've been living with. He hasn't called you to live in pain. He hasn't called you to live in brokenness. He hasn't called you to live in lost now. He's called you to be up and over. He's called you to be above and not beneath. Greater is he who lives in you than he who is in the world. Oh, he's called you an overcomer. He's bringing breakthrough in your life right now. felt as we were worshiping there's so many incredible leaders and pastors in this room people that have spoken into my life for years got the utmost respect for but I just felt in this place whether you're a senior pastor or just become a, a leader in your church a month ago I believe there's leaders in this room and just as we were worshiping I, I felt like this cloud this and not a glory cloud like a like a mist like a darkness it's like you've been walking around and you love Jesus. It's not an altar call for salvation. You, you love Jesus, but there's been like this cloud on what you've been trying to accomplish. And you, you got dreams in your heart, but you just feel like you've been in a holding pattern. You know, when aeroplanes come into land, sometimes the weather's not good. They just put them in a holding pattern. You feel like in your ministry and your leadership, you've been in this holding pattern. You're like, Jesus, when am I ever going to break free of this? What is going to be the thing that is going to bring breakthrough? And you've been in that for longer than you thought you ever would be in the small. Morning. I believe even as we were singing, there's a light beginning to shine in the darkness of your leadership. There's a light beginning to shine in the darkness of what's been trying to hold you back. And this morning, I speak to the plans of the enemy. 
and the assignment of the enemy that's been coming against you, your church, your youth ministry, your small group. And I speak power of Jesus. Breakthrough. Let the light begin to shine. God, I thank you for breakthrough. I thank you for multiplication. I thank you for salvation like people have never seen before. I thank you for influence. I thank you for open doors. God, you're going before people. You're coming behind people. You're teaching people in. On every side. Oh, we can improve. Thank you so much for joining us here at Planet Shakers 2017. We pray that today's message has blessed you. We want every single one of these sessions to bless you. Hey, did you know that you can check out daystar.com forward slash Planet Shakers. You can watch any of these sessions. You can see behind the scenes footage as well. We would love to hear from you. Hey, if you've got anything in your life that you would love us to pray for, you can contact us on the number on the screen or of course daystar.com forward slash Planet prayer but we uh, we pray that God has been blessing you and we know that the rest of this conference we believe it's going to speak to you it's going to ignite a passion in your heart and it's going to empower you to make a difference in your world.